Hello guys, welcome back to another Neo2 build video and in today's video we're going to be taking a look at my Ninja Burst build. Burst in this context is referring to both fantastic burst damage but also your burst counter which you will have infinite access to for using both your ninja feathers and defensive evading through anima generation on ninja to hit. Now there is one thing I want to make clear before we begin, if you're familiar with my videos then you'll already be expecting this but when it comes to my builds even if we decide to utilize very cheesy overpowered elements into our build we're always going to try and balance that out by making things like our weapon play viable. This is to stop things from becoming boring and stale and allowing us to challenge ourselves while still having the option to make things easy for ourselves without having to swap builds. So whilst this build offers incredible boss melting capability with the ninjutsu, it also provides a solid emphasis on kusaragama weapon play for those like me who prefer that as a general playstyle. There are multiple ways to play this build depending on your playstyle. You could focus entirely on the ninjutsu, of which there are two foundations. You could focus around the kunai aspect or the ninja feathers aspect entirely. But if you want to play it like I do, you'll mostly focus around the kusarigama combat until you feel the need to dip into your ninjutsu to destroy something that otherwise might give you trouble. So we will look into the playstyles and combat tips a little bit later in the video. But for now, let's take a look at the sets and equipment I'm running with. First of all, my Kusari Gama isn't attached to anything else in terms of sets, so you have options here for any weapon you'd like to use, so you're not limited to using a Kusari Gama. So if you were to use, say, a spear, you would actually get further bonus to one of the set bonuses, being a damage boost on ninjutsu power, which we are stacking. However, I'm living out my ninja fantasy by using a purity Kusari Gama. The reason I opt for purity, alongside it being a modifier that the least amount of enemies are resistant to, it's a complete yokai destroyer, so humans give me absolutely no trouble with the Kusari Gama, and the amount of destruction that can be done to yokai whilst using purity makes it a no brainer for this kind of build. Not only does it completely lock down a yokai due to the key damage and generation prevention it does, but it also, like general elements, counts as an assist towards confusion, so applying purity status within a single renegade dragon ability or a quick attack combo from high or low stance followed by a single feather of any element will proc confusion. On top of that, you have an incredible synergy with feathers because feathers do an absurd amount of damage to enemies that are out of key. That is where you see the insane burst damage where yokais go from taking some damage to suddenly exploding with damage numbers. So purity and ninja feathers have fantastic synergy. For our main set bonuses, Aided by our Yasakani Megatama accessory, we are, as you'd expect for a ninja build, running the basic ninja meta of 4 piece Master of Illusion coming from our Swifthawk sword and 3 pieces of Flying Kato armor for the 5 piece set bonus which is a combination of ninja damage, ninja power, faster key recovery and untouched ninjutsu. You see we are losing that 6 piece set bonus of damage bonus based on ninja power, however the damage bonus received from this isn't as strong as you might think and it would also mean having to drop the Kusari Gama for a spear which is not something I'm going to do as if I were to play spear I probably wouldn't be playing a ninja build. Therefore it benefits us more to place emphasis on ninja power itself as that directly boosts our ninjutsu and we achieve this by running two pieces of the Iga ninja set for the three piece set bonus of plus 45 to ninjutsu power. For our accessories we of course have our Yasakani Megatama which is essential to any endgame build and we also have a fan accessory which isn't essential but there is one reason you definitely want to use this if you have one. This accessory can roll untouched ninjutsu and it's one of the few if only accessories that can do so. As far as I'm aware even the writing set can't roll untouched ninjutsu so definitely consider using this accessory if you have one in your storage. For our main ranged weapon we're using Warrior of the West bow for the two piece bonus of life increase. So taking a look at the tempered and inherited stats, on our Kusa we have attack bonus dexterity. I opt for this over specific skill damage because it's a flat that increase that applies to all of our weapons attacks and I'm using a lot of different skills within the Kusa's moveset. Also according to some of you in the comments who've been doing a great job of researching recent number crunches from other people, apparently in most cases even if your playstyle revolves around a specific skill it's still more beneficial to roll attack bonus to main stat over specific skill damage on the weapon due to it being a 10% damage increase to all skills as opposed to 9.8% to one specific skill. You can then of course apply specific skill increases to all 
all of your armor pieces. Everything after this is entirely optional. I preferenced an inheritable of active skill key damage, life drain on melee attack, active skill consumption and grapple damage which is great on human enemies. I have zero optimization on my sword because it never gets used other than for its set bonus but there is one reason to switch to the katana if you want to focus your playstyle around kunai damage but we'll get into that later. On my main ranged weapon I want damage bonus agility. I should actually have this on my rifle too but I haven't got around to doing that just yet. Not because they stack as this only applies to whatever ranged weapon you have active but because depending on the build you might want to have a rifle as your main ranged weapon as it's damage will scale better with certain stats so in this case due to having 99 points in skill I should be maining my rifle if I cared about ranged weapon damage though I've mostly been using the bow for its purity arrows. Moving on to the gear I once again need to state something here due to getting the same comments in every single video I love you guys but I can't give you a guide within every build guide on how to inherit skill damage and attack on all of your gear. It takes too much time and convolutes the video. This is a build video so please guys if you don't know about inheriting specific skill damage and gold inheritables please look up a guide on gold inheritables and trading in Neo 2. Trading is how you're going to get all of the inheritables needed to apply skill damage and attack on all of your armor pieces. I may make a guide on this just to have a place to send you but honestly guys there are far bigger YouTubers than me that have put out countless guides on this so you just need to type it into YouTube. Okay so regarding your general stats the most important things you need and you want on every single piece of gear is ninja power and untouched ninjutsu. Optionally if you're lucky like I was and managed to find someone to drop you gold inheritables for shuriken and kunai damage go ahead and throw that on there too. For some of these armor pieces you're going to have to inherit the untouched ninjutsu as well. So piece by piece starting with our headpiece we have gold inherited attack, ninjutsu power, key increase, life increase, gold inherited shuriken and kunai damage and untouched ninjutsu. For our chest piece inherited renegade dragon damage this is optional but i'll explain why i use this ability a little later on in the video life recovery on amrita absorption i'll also explain why i use this a little bit later untouched ninjutsu which i believe you can roll natively on the chest piece alongside the gloves ninjutsu power and gold inheritables of shuriken kunai damage and attack increase for the gloves shuriken and kunai damage ninjutsu power renegade dragon damage untouched ninjutsu attack increase and life increase. For the waist, faster winded recovery, life increase, ninjutsu power, inherited untouched ninjutsu and gold inheritables of shuriken kunai damage and attack increase. For the legs, gold inherited attack increase, ninjutsu power, tenacity, dodge key consumption and gold inherited untouched ninjutsu and shuriken kunai damage. On our fan accessory, key increase followed by the ninja trio of ninjutsu power, untouched ninjutsu and shuriken and kunai damage. On our yasakani, life drain on ninjutsu hit, this is not essential but it's a nice little bonus, shuriken and kunai damage, ninjutsu power and life recovery on amrita absorption. So the reason I have life recovery on amrita absorption coming from this accessory and our chest piece is that one of my yokai abilities pulls amrita out for us and the healing boost it gives is quite significant when stacked alongside life gain on yokai ability hit so i basically have an in combat heal button so onto the guardian spirit and cause we're using nekomata for pretty much everything it has to offer here anima charge bonus on cumulative damage throwing weapon damage yokai ability damage on yokai abilities that are either feral by nature or reroll to feral by using mortal soul cause extended burst counter in feral and most importantly anima bonus on ninjutsu hit this allows us to both spam feathers without running out of anima and having infinite access to our feral burst counter which we can use defensively to evade whenever we want. Because not only are we regaining anima spent whenever we land feathers but we can also quickly charge our anima by throwing out kunai. If you want to get really crazy we can pop some lantern plant fruit at the beginning of any major encounter to full charge our anima bar and make absolutely sure that there is no way we're going to run out of anima during the fight even while spamming burst counter so long as we're using ninjutsu in between. Our second spirit guardian is entirely optional but right now i'm running kagawani for the life drain on yokai ability hit both kagawani and nekomata also come with anima charge on active skill now for our cores 
I'm doing things a little bit differently. Most people you see running an Anima Charge Ninja build are going to be using Otaki Maru. Now, of course, you can do that too. And in doing so, you'll be crazy strong in both damage dealt and self healing from Otaki Maru. However, for me, we already have a lot of cheesy stuff available to us with the kunai and the feathers. And running Otaki Maru as well just makes the build feel trivial and uninspired. So I don't want to feel like a mage, I want to feel like a ninja. So I personally don't run Otaki Maru here. I instead try to create a heal button with my yokai ability that feels a little bit more technical and RPG like so I've got Namahagi in here that doesn't do a lot of damage but it does pull out Amrita which alongside life gain on Amrita absorption and the life drain from yokai ability hit coming from our other cores gives us a significant health boost without feeling overpowered. It also has melee damage versus zero key enemy which is something we're going to encounter often with our purity kusari gamma. Next I have a Gaki Soul Core in here just for the anima charge in Dark Realm and Life Drain on Yokai ability hit but also because of its low cost as a core so I can fit in my favourite core with this build which is Kasha. Now I know on screen the cost to my cores look a little bit out of place but I'll explain that in a moment. For now in regard to Kasha it's my favourite core because it has three fantastic aspects to it. Firstly as a skill it does great damage, knockback and applies burning. Secondly it comes with Life Drain on Yokai ability hit at an A ranking and finally it has faster movement speed on Amrita Absorption which is good when running through entire missions because you're just speeding from engagement to engagement so it's by far my favourite core. Now as mentioned some things are wrong with my setup here so I'll tell you how to optimise them. Any yokai ability that you're going to actively use needs to be rerolled to Feral to make use of the 20% yokai ability damage coming from our spirit. Again you can do this by soul fusing your chosen core with a mortal soul core that is Feral. So moving on to our jutsu, I'm only running with regular kunai and regular shuriken. This is for two reasons. Like I said earlier, I mostly focus around the Kusari Gamma, and when I want to go full cheese mode, I'll focus around the Ninja Feathers. I do use my Kunai frequently, but not for main DPS. The two situations I'm going to use them in are primarily for Anima Gain, and occasionally to quickly clear out a couple of smaller enemies from a large group, allowing me a fair fight against a bigger enemy. Another great thing to do with the Kunai and Shuriken is you can use them to finish off a target that is at low health, and a regular Kunai and a regular Shuriken are not only strong enough to do this, but because they're only regular versions, you can carry far more of them for far less cost, allowing us to completely stack out our fire, water and lightning feathers to max capacity. So we of course also have our feathers, and for the Omyo magic spells, it's entirely up to you. If you're running purity, then you will want a purification talisman as it offers far more status accumulation than what is native on the weapon. Now, based on that, if you're asking why I even bother to take purity on the weapon when I can just take the talisman, it's actually for the unique effect of being able to keep horse from guard, which is actually very useful, even though you never really want to be guarding in light armor as most big attacks will just smash through your key. But I always try to perfect guard even when dodging sometimes. You'll get hit during the dodge animation and hitting guard at the right time will not only mitigate that hit, but it allows you to keep pulse right after through the purified weapon skill. So Arch Yokai Talisman, this makes it easier for you to regenerate anima and in an anima focused playstyle, it's obviously very useful. Rejuvenation Talisman is nice for a little bit of a boost to healing and Barrier Talisman is great for key management, but none of these latter three are essential to the build. Now, taking a look at the Kasari Gama tree, the most important skills are going to be as follows. Summer Twilight, this is your self buff that increases your attack strength. Think of it like Carnage Talisman, but it's going to negatively impact your key damage received as opposed to lowered defenses like on Carnage Talisman. I also recommend Blade Spin as this is the fastest attack to throw out at the end of any combo and is 9 times out of 10 what I'll be using to finish a target that is about 1 hit from death, so consider Blade Spin one of your major finishers. It's also perfect for quickly dispatching smaller enemies such as Gaki, Imps and Skeletal Warriors. One Blade Spin should be enough to kill multiple of them if they're all within the proximity of it. Now, my main DPS ability and purity stacker is Renegade Dragon, but let me explain things because I know that Kusari Gama mains are going to be scratching their heads. If you don't know, one of the most frustrating things about Kusari Gama is that its best ability isn't even an ability, it's the basic quick attack from high stance. It's strong, fast, easy to access, but the problem with it is that you have to be in high stance to use it, which is fine for a lot of builds, but with this one, you've got to remember that wearing all light armor, we can be completely destroyed in as little as two hits, and even one hit in some cases, so for this reason, we're constantly having to move in and out of low stance, switching over to high stance to use our quick attack, which is pretty standard knowledge for any experienced player, and Renegade Dragon does have a lot of problems. It has zero tracking, can miss often, and also has a bug where if you use it directly 
after certain abilities, the weapon just becomes invisible and your character is spinning through the air with their fists. So the main question is why am I using it? Well, firstly, I only throw this out when I know I can land it. I attach it to low stance where active skills are unaffected by stance damage, i.e. high stance doing more damage and low stance doing low damage. Um, active skills aren't affected by this, so I'm getting the benefits of being able to dodge position and manage my key in preparation to set up renegade dragon which does huge damage huge key damage especially against blocking humanoids and incredible status stacking being able to sit in low stance whilst competing with the damage of quick attack in high stance is very very useful to me hopefully the footage at the start of the video gave you a general idea on how i utilize renegade dragon and how effective it can be when used right from here everything else is optional I highly suggest picking up as many passives as you can in regards to key and defense at low health. But in regard to other skills, I like to use waterfall to parry humans in mid stance and foot sweep can also be pretty funny to follow up that parry with but it's highly unreliable. So what I attach to my high stance is leaping strike boosted by the hidden skill water drop which allows us to jump over certain attacks and then fly back in to continue our attack this can work great when rushed by multiple enemies but keep in mind it's also somewhat unreliable at times you can be at peak height and hits will still register on you and like land you on your butt but other times you can do crazy cool stuff and just leap over enemy red charge attacks and feel like a complete boss doing so so this is entirely optional. For the Mystic Art, it really depends on what skills you use most. With the active skills I use, I'd probably see most benefit from Waxing Crescent, which focuses more around the sickle aspect of the Kasari Gamma. But because I do quite often switch into high stance quick attacks, I opted for Shooting Star which focuses more around the weight aspect of the Kasari Gamma. But honestly, you're going to be using the weight and the sickle just as much as each other, so I find equal benefit in using either. In the Shifting Tree, I recommend picking up Leech Kin for health gain on Yokai ability hit, as well as anything that contributes to anima gain, such as Earth Vein, Dragon Vein, Dragon's Echo, Absorb Yokai Realm, and Devour Yokai Realm. Regarding these last two skills, they synergize perfectly with any secondary stat that you can get on any soul core, which lets you keep pulse with a yokai ability. From here, I would also highly recommend anything that boosts your burst counter, such as special finesse refresh and special finesse recuperate. In the samurai skill tree, you of course want damage boost dexterity and damage boost skill. Now, there's one last thing to mention about the skill trees but this is only applicable to you if you're deciding to run a full kunai build, which would mean storm kunai spamming behind enemies and focus entirely on that playstyle. In that situation, you'd be running with your sword as your active weapon, maxing out thrust damage and backstab damage with the mystic art sword of execution. I obviously don't focus on kunai and I'm using kusari gamma as my main weapon, so this entire tree can be ignored for me. For our core stats, I'm level 300, but I'll explain priority for those who are lower leveled. Of course, the first thing you want to do is look at the stat requirements on all of your gear, accessories and spirit and place points in order of what's needed to activate the special bonuses of those. One big tip I can give you based on a lot of comments I'm seeing at the moment is how to lower these stat requirements on armor. Basically, forging armor from a smithing text gives you a dramatic reduction to stat requirements versus wearing a pair of armor that you found as loot. For example, something that requires 7 stamina that you forged can cost up to 15 stamina if you found it as loot. So if you really want to min max to squeeze every point efficiently, definitely forge all of your armor. So our main priority here in terms of core stats is definitely dexterity, followed by by skill. Dexterity obviously affects our ninjutsu power and our ninjutsu capacity, but it's also a main scaling stat of Kusari Gamma, even though we can remodel it to change that, but more on that later. Our second prioritized stat is skill, because it has secondary scaling with both ninjutsu and Kusari Gamma. For my stat dump, I've chosen Constitution, simply for the fact that this is a pure light armor build and stacking life is literally the difference between being one shot and not being one shot in some circumstances. But this is entirely up to you. I recommend at least 10 points in magic to carry enough spells and everything else you see there is simply for gear bonus requirements. Due to wearing all light armor, we don't need any points in stamina to reach A rank agility. Another important thing to take note of when squeezing as much damage out of your main weapon as possible is with remodeling. If you're low level and only have one stat maxed out at 99, so let's say for the Kusari Gamma you have Dexterity maxed out at 99, then remodel the Kusa to fully scale with Dex, which should give you an A ranking. But if you're a higher level and have both skill and Dexterity level to 99, then you want to dual scale your Kusa to scale with both skill and Dexterity, which you do by going to remodel, highlighting one of the main stats, in this case skill, 
pressing triangle on it and then moving down to the other stat in this case dexterity and then pressing x on it to finish up this will now scale your weapon with both stats providing a bigger damage bonus than if it was scaled with a single skill by dropping a rank from dex down to an a minus but upscaling the skill stat from a D plus to an A minus. But remember, this only works if both of those stats are of an equally high investment. Finally, for our clan, we're still using Honda for the 28% increase to skill damage, 24% of which coming from maxing out your rank with the clan through hefty donations. And that's pretty much the build guys. If I've forgotten anything, please let me know down in the comments. And you're always welcome to ask any questions or leave suggestions on what kind of builds you want to see next. For more content, you're always welcome to give us a follow over on Twitch and Instagram. Just search Xenoswarm on the relevant platforms. If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up as that really helps me out. And if you're not already subscribed, consider doing so for more Neo 2 content coming soon. Okay guys, until then, please stay safe and take care.